How's it everyone? This video expedition will cover NASA's heavy launch systems in season 1 and 2 of For All Mankind. The series takes place in an alternate reality with a timeline divergent point in the year 1966 where the Soviet Union avoids breaking apart leading into an extended space race between the Cold War superpowers of the United States and USSR spanning into the 21st century. As an aside, two previous video breakdowns outlining the political and economic changes in this parallel universe will be linked at the end of this episode and down below in the description. NASA's Apollo and Saturn rocket programs were developed on a reciprocal scale and along similar technological levels as in our time frame. However, the overall size and lifespan of these heavy launch systems increased from 15 total rockets built to 33 produced in this new reality. Additionally, the Apollo program itself continued nearly two decades beyond 1970, with the final Saturn rockets launched in the late 1980s. Jamestown 1 was a crewed lunar outpost that was established on the lunar surface in 1973. The habitat module was delivered by Apollo 20's unmanned Saturn V cargo mission, securing the first sustained base beyond Earth's orbit with three NASA astronauts. This gave the American space program a much needed victory after a Soviet cosmonaut set foot on the moon a full month ahead of the Apollo 11 mission in June of 1969. America's first space station Skylab was lifted into low Earth orbit in 1973 on the upper stages of a modified Saturn V heavy cargo rocket. NASA's extended Apollo program with crew rotational relief missions launched by the Saturn 1B variants routinely delivered three astronauts via the command service module's orbital docking maneuvers. This allowed the research station to remain in a prolonged orbit into the 1980s, over a decade longer than the Skylab from our timeline. Additional Saturn service missions led to the station's expansion, adding module sections with increased scientific and observation capacity. A total of eight Saturn 1B rockets and three cargo variants were launched in support of Skylab's duration in low Earth orbit until the space shuttles assumed this role in the 1980s. One of the final Saturn V heavy cargo rockets delivered the central module section for the initial phase of the Moon Lab space station deployed into lunar orbit. The Moon Lab's primary module consisted that of a modified version of Skylab that would eventually be expanded into a refueling dock station in preparation for future missions to the Red Planet. A total of 15 Apollo Moon missions were launched by the Saturn V rockets with an additional four unmanned heavy cargo and support missions within the rotational phases of Earth and lunar orbits. The Sea Dragon Ultra Heavy Launch Vehicle was developed by NASA to deliver large amounts of orbital lift cargo in support of lunar operational mission programs. First launched in 1977 from the South Pacific Ocean, this massive rocket topped off at 150 meters in height, capable of carrying four times the payload of a Saturn V, making the Sea Dragon the largest launch vehicle ever built. With a diameter of 23 meters, the rocket's mass could fit an entire Saturn V heavy inside of its first booster stage section. Utilized as NASA's new generation of reusable spacecraft where the lower atmospheric launch stages could be safely returned and recovered on the Pacific Ocean. Four Sea Dragons were built performing the primary logistical cargo missions between the orbits of Earth and Luna. Over a dozen supply missions included the Jamestown base expansion from a single habitat crew of three into a network of connected structures forming the first colonial settlement in the solar system. The base consisted that of dozens of personnel performing scientific and engineering duties in this rapidly expanding Jamestown lunar city. Into the 1990s, additional Sea Dragon and Space Shuttle missions completed the Lunar Space Station, expanding the initial module section into a docking port fuel platform. 
Hydrogen refined from surface ice deposits would be transported up to the station's storage modules as engine propellant in preparation for extended space missions on the journey to Mars. From 1966 through 1990, 33 total Saturn rockets were built and launched before the program was eventually phased out of service to be replaced by the new fleet of shuttles and next generation of fusion-powered Pathfinder space planes. These heavy launch systems combined with the Sea Dragons were NASA's workhorses in the early stages of America's space program. The colonization of the moon was made possible by the network of infrastructure around the earth lunar orbits deployed from the payloads of these rockets. New aerospace programs of this alternate timeline like the Space Shuttle, Pathfinder, and International Spaceport will be covered in part two as the competition moves into the 21st century's race for the red planet. If you enjoy this type of content and would like to watch more sci-fi video breakdowns, hit subscribe and check out the channel's video section. Thanks so much for watching and have a great soul.